We are a two acre facility located in the heart of Charlotte, offering training, agility, competitions, daycare, and boarding where dogs sleep over in cottages rather than cages or kennels. Teresa, uh, what we, one of the things we wanted to show you, this is our kind of uh, simulated uh, training center. And uh, we teach, uh, from here we teach service dogs to, to close a cabinet by pushing on this, this cabinet to pull open. Um, this is for, for children in wheelchairs or people who need assistance opening and closing cabinets and whatnot. One of the things I did want to show you um, is when we start sin detection, um, this is early on, but this is probably the most graphic. We, uh, once we've taught a dog the scent that they want, whether it's narcotics, explosives, or in the case of this, peanut detection for children with peanut allergies, um, we would put uh, the scent in, uh, in a canister like this. And the one with the black eye is actually the, what we call the live uh, canister and has, in fact, the peanuts. So Ollie is going to actually put the uh, peanut cans down um, and then uh, line them that way, Ollie. Sometimes we do a, a four square, sometimes we do a line. And um, obviously this is the beginning because we have to teach a dog to sweep a room and find a single peanut or anything that has peanuts in it. So as you see, the one with, that has the black eye is the, the live peanut can. And so uh, with Rio, we would have her sweep a room. Remember, dogs smell in actual color. So where we might walk in a room and say, hmm, that smells like a pot roast cooking. A dog would walk in a room and smell, say, hmm, carrots, potatoes, meat, thyme, all the spices. As I said, they smell in color. OK, Bria. Bria loves to work. And uh, peanut detection is one of her specialties. So, Bria, find a peanut. Find a peanut. Good girl. Good girl. That's the treat. Okay, Bria, here. Okay, Bria. Okay, all you want to mix them up again, but don't put your hands down in them for the simple reason that uh, that uh, we don't want we don't want the scent to get on your hands. Can you spread them out, that one out, just a little more? This one? Yeah, spread it out, yes, a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. Ready to go, girl? Okay, Bria, fine. So she keeps going back to the one, but before. But when she has it, then they usually always have it. So she's going to try it again. And then, as I said, we would also put a peanut and have her grid a room and check in all the corners for uh, anything with peanut. You could even hold up a box of whatever, whatever flakes, and if there's peanuts detected in that, so let's see if she can find it from here. So, there we go. Good girl. So, as you can see, that, this would be incredibly valuable to anybody, any child who had peanut allergies because they could, it would free them up to uh, uh, go to someone's home, spend the night, because before they would go into the room, the dog would sweep the room, and if someone had accidentally dropped a peanut, the dog would find it, and uh, then the child would be safe. So, Teresa, we want to show you a little bit of agility. Agility, as I said, is uh, the fastest growing sport in America. Uh, there are very few, unfortunately, there are very few indoor agility um, facilities. And um, we, we do agility meets here for fun as well as serious. And as I said, one of the reasons it's so popular is that any dog uh, and anyone can do it. I've seen 75-year-old women do agility. I've seen wiener dogs do it. I've seen uh, great games do it. Not very fast, but they, they do it. So this is Bert, and uh, I'm 
I'm going to do just a little quick agility. This is not necessarily his, his uh, greatest sport that he does, but um, he's pretty good at it. So, ready, Bert? Bert? Walk it. Walk it. Now we're going to do a little twist on it. We're going to try this. I'm going to have him do the last shoot, and then I'm going to incorporate a trip trick, which is to wipe his feet. So we're going to give that a try, okay? So, first, shoot. First, wipe your feet. Wipe your feet. Great. Well done, Bert. So in addition to uh, agility and some other things, we also do competitive obedience. And that is uh, what you're seeing here is what is called a focus heel. And this, this would be the kind of a heel you would expect in a competition, uh, whether it be the sport of Schutzen or, the sport, or just a, a companion dog uh, obedience trial. And so we teach a dog that, um, that they're to do a, a, a down in motion, to do sit, and we don't actually use the word stay. We uh, sit means sit until we give a command that supersedes it or we say the F-R-E-E -E word. Uh, in, at the dog knowledge, a dog's name is a command and it means to come to them and then also there's come or here. So what, what you're seeing with Frank, he's telling me a, a, a different succession of uh, sit down, up, down. We kind of call these puppy push-ups. Schutzen is a three-part sport. It's one-third tracking, one-third protection, and one-third obedience. So protection is always kind of the exciting part that people like to see. Um, Mia is a Malinois who got their fame recently because they were the dogs that went in after Osama bin Laden and they love to bite. And so Frank's going to show you uh, Mia doing a running bite. So take it away, Frank. They are taught to hold on no matter what. You see Frank, you see the grip is so strong that, and this is just a sport to Mia, and she, is, she will hold on until uh, Frank gives her the command to, to release. And it's just as important for her to understand to release when Frank tells her to as it is to bite. So you've got a strong bite and you've got a dog that's under control, which is the best of all worlds. Thank you.